Late breaking muse flash. A poet, a poet died on the number three train today, just before rush hour. The only soul on board. The number three train died today of a lifeless poet on its heart. It was an awful crash. Some say a boulder emerged from hell. Others that God put a wall there. All we know is the poet, dead on the number three train, was flattened in the ribs of a great steel accordion. And his death knell sounded strangely like Lady of Spain or the band played on, or some top ten polka tune. There are no words to express our loss of the number three express. The funeral for the train is scheduled for next Tuesday. <laughs> I guess it's called old age, you're losing half of your friends in just a couple of years. This is called Memento Mori. I keep the dead around in snapshots, gestures of my inner monarchy to remind me of my mortality, familiar faces on the edges of my vision that on some days draw my eye, have to be recalled through this flat imagery, only because I too easily forget faces and sometimes I forget that the dead have died. This is, this is called Hu Hu Guru. The comet of Eastern mysticism has a tail a hundred years long, and still they come westward, arriving with a little honor and a few self-publishings. Prophets who left their lands for the greener pastures of endless bourgeois naivete, to garner the oohs and ahs of soft women and softer men who grow starry-eyed at the mere mention of foreign saints and gods who nod with freshman understanding at these priests without tenure. Say it again, they plead, and the poly polysyllabic buzzwords roll off velvet tongues and the lost at last feel found. Sunday in Washington Square Park. A woman wrapped in black is calling to pigeons, talking to them in sentences as though she shares their secrets. They do not reply by gaze or movement, but she insists, and soon they are fascinated and come closer. She leans over the fencing of benches and wrought iron, her words indicate that she knows the birds in the grassy area and that they know her. We innocent bystanders can't be sure. Is she mad? Is she St. Francis? Was St. Francis mad? She begs the question and becomes a docent to a passerby explaining bird behavior, interspersing more bird talk. Hello, mama. So she is a bird lady. There are such people. And yet maybe the birds are thinking questions at her like, why do you come here on days when there are so many crumb tossing tourists? Come back on Tuesday. <laughs> This is, this is all monosyllables, and it's going to bring everybody down, so I'm going to do it anyway. It's called Old Child at Bed Put Down. It is sort of inspired by Dylan Thomas, but I, I won't blame him for this. If I had but one word to sell, I'd pay my way back out of hell. Stop would be what was heard that would hold me fast against death's loud knell. If I had but one eye to see, I use it to plumb the depths of me, and if it saw where my life would end, I'd give my bones to hell's best friend. And if that friend of hell so deep would not take in the soul to keep, I'd find a word to take me in where I might dwell midst hell's worst kin. No more to run in fields of sun, but grow from rocks all I have done. No day would come that saw my bloom when my corpse dries out in my dark, closed room. But there'll be those in black dress clothes who of my life might write one word and sound that note through clouds of throes. Yet it will not by these ears be heard, and I will ne'er know of that word 